in this worship experience. Thank you. Now may the words of our mouth, the meditation of these hearts, be acceptable in your sight. You are our strength and our redeemer. And the people of God said, Amen. May be seated in the room. We honor the Lord today for all of his precious benefits. There are benefits in serving the true and living God. One of the benefits is that he woke us up this morning. And I all times say, if he had not awakened us, would nothing else matter. But we are here again with a worship attitude to give reverential respect to the God of our salvation. We're so grateful. And as we proceed into our message this morning, we want to uh, send our prayers for our brother, Brother Watson, Brother Eugene Watson, in the loss of his sister. We pray for strength as they go through the valley of weeping. Amen. Amen. When you lose a loved one, it's no shame in dying. Amen. The shame part of dying is to die without knowing the Lord. Amen. All time we say we lost someone, but when they are saved, they are not lost. They just moved to a better place. And that's what we think of death transitioning to a better place. Where the wicked will cease from trouble. Weary from being blessed. Thank God for life. And I'm going to say something before I preach today to all of you. Leo. Live life. Amen. If you got life, live it. So too, too many of us, we are in seclusion. We are in our own little special world. But we need to live life as a family of God. Giving respect to one another and then pleading each other case. But when a weaker brother call a strong bear the infirmity of you. And then sometimes out of courtesy and kindness, you you can ask a brother, sister, can I be on in assistance? All right. All right. You know, live life. Jesus said, 
I come that you might have life and have it abundantly. The saints of God are somewhat pitiful in this day and time. Been robbed of your joy. And everyone becomes suspicious of one another. Let me tell all of you something. All of us got something that we wish we didn't have. And when you become suspicious of your brother, thinking he or she got something, maybe you're the one who got it. You all time running from, running from, going in the hiding, going in seclusion. Scared of your sister and brother. All right. You know, the pandemic came up on the world. And instead of the world controlling it, it controlled us. God did not put anything in the world to control humankind unless you allowed it to do so. Yes, we all sin. Come short of the glory of God. And when we know we all sin, we can't be judged living in the world. We embrace one another. And try to get a description that will fulfill our shortcoming. Be of good courage. Life goes on. I don't care what the circumstances are, what situation you're involved, life goes on. Don't quit. The joy of the Lord you better put that in your memory. If you got joy, you got some strength. But if you weak, weary, wounded, and sad, don't too many people want to be when I'm here. Your, 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 your sanctuary doors should swing on welcome hinges. All right. And whosoever will, let it come. Maybe the reason that they're coming may be not the reason that you're coming, but uh, all of us are coming purposely for something. Amen. Why? Because we all need something. All right. Why don't you just say quickly, Lord, Lord, send down your blessing. Send down your blessing. Lord, send down your mercy. Lord, send down your mercy. And if you say that and mean that, Blessings are on the way. Mercy is a very good thing. I want to preach this morning in a continuation of last Sunday message. And if you are hearers of the preaching of your man of God, I read two different occasions of scripture for our Father Day on last Sunday. I read from Luke's Gospel, not that you turn now. I read from Luke's Gospel in reference to the Father who received his son. And I call that message then the success of a father. Of a father. All right. And because of time on last Sunday, I ask you to turn to the Gospel of Mark in that fifth chapter. And we want to today to continue to talk about the success of a father. Reading Mark chapter 5, verse 22, and actually the entire 
fifth chapter is for your observing. But for the sake of time and a topic and a text, verse 22 and 23 say, Behold, there comes one of the rulers of the synagogue. Somebody said he was somebody. And his name was Jairus. And when he saw him, talking about Jesus, he fell at his feet. A father with reverential respect for the Son of God. Amen. That's success right there already. All right. In verse 23, after he had failed at his feet, he made a request. You got a picture of this thing today, brothers and sisters, uh, seeing a good dad going to Jesus on the behalf of his beautiful, sick, dying daughter. And he besought him greatly. Well, Actually, he said, Jesus, I need you. My little daughter lies at the point of death. She's dying. Well, well, Daddy, if you're here today, put yourself in this synagogue ruler place. Right. Going to Jesus. Making requests. Not concerned about my health, what's going on with me. I'm only concerned about my 12 year old daughter. All right. I'm making a plea. I'm requesting on her behalf. She's lying and she's dying. He, he said to Jesus, he said, come man, and lay your hand on her. You got to see the picture. In all way, you really see the picture there, put yourself in that place when you think about your child, your children. Yeah. And perhaps at some point in time, they went through something and, and you couldn't do no more for them and you had to turn it over to the Lord. That she may be healed and she shall leave. The success of a father, I was pretty much touched on last Sunday when I saw how the dads, the fathers, showed up in worship with that church. Yeah. One of the great men in a sanctuary here to see that. All right. All right. Sitting and serving with his child or two. Yeah. If you want to see a successful dad, yeah. don't look for him with money in the bank. All right. Don't look for him with clout in the community. Look for him sitting in church. All right. Because a successful father, when he has done all he can for his children, he knows where to go for them. To talk about a successful father, to set this chapter of Mark's gospel yeah. it'll do you good to read the entire chapter all right, all right. because it has to do with confrontational with Jesus it had to do with me and Jesus it, it had to do with casting my care Upon him. Mm -hmm. 
This fifth chapter must gospel open up with. He came across the Sea of Galilee to a place called the Dara. And there he met uh, the country of the Galilee. And you have confrontation with a man. Yeah. If you look at verse 2 of chapter 5, it says, and when he come out of the ship, a baby there met him. Out of the tomb, a man with unclean. Yeah. Anybody got the Bible? Yeah. Spirit. Uh -huh. This man in the opening of this script chapter, it never said whether or not he was a father. Perhaps he could have been. It never said that he was a good husband. But he could be. But he actually was a no-name man. Found himself in a difficult situation. Nobody in his right mind would want to live in the cemetery. Something had to be wrong with him at some point in time, possibly that he fell from grace. Uh, possibly at some point in time, he became a cast out from the family. He could have been a father who didn't support uh, his children or uh, didn't support his wife, but he found himself by himself. Verse 4 said, because that he had been often bound with feathers and chains, and the chain had been plucked asunder by him, and the feather broken. In pieces, neither could any of that tame people. This was an untamed man. He was harmful to human, and he was more harmful to himself. Anytime you find yourself in cemetery or much dead folks, Every time you find yourself beating up yourself, somebody in here today possibly guilty of when you came short in some areas of your life and it looked like the bottom had fallen out and you find yourself calling yourself stupid, calling yourself a name. You start beating up on yourself all because you fell victim to life circumstances. This man, in the opening of this fifth chapter of Mark's gospel, uh, verse number six, but when he saw Jesus, it's something about when you confront Jesus. If you really sincere about confronting Jesus, I promise you that if you do, your life will change. Are y'all in here today? When he saw Jesus in this sixth verse, uh, for all, he ran and worshipped him. Now he was crazy. Beat up on himself. But he saw enough in Jesus to go and fall down with he and then he cried out for seven with a loud voice and said, What have I do with thee, Jesus? He even knew Jesus was from royalty, thy son of the most high God. I'll show thee by God that thou torment me not. Now Jesus would not torment me. But sometimes life situation 
what torments you. You want to blame it on somebody else.
Christ Jesus was baptized in me. Well, my dad is still at right back there well. This is a hard one. Come back, Sam. And I heard the preacher say, I baptize you. Name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And I heard my dad shout, That's mine. Shaking his head. And a lot of the people sit there in that crowd. My brothers, my mother. I never went to get that. My dad was in the crowd that morning. Being the first time standing before people trying to preach the first sermon. I can hear my dad at all. Come on up, son. Right. I remember that. All right. All right. My dad said, All right now. All right. All right. All right. All right. And when you hit your daddy's box, All right. All right. I'm talking about when you showed up leaving. All right. All right. You would challenge that for the rest of your life. All of you in here, you got parents. Your ultimate goal should be to make your parents proud. If they stick with you and stay with you, you make them proud. I know mama love her children all the time. Dad don't love her children all the time. But you got great responsibilities to make them proud. Uh, EJ, make your mom and dad proud.